Fedrid's Folly is back again, and it's going to be devoured by Tyranids. Well, not if the Odder Malleus Inquisitor has something to say about it. Don't know why it's not Odder Xenos, it's the Odder Malleus, I guess. I don't know, they were out hunting demons, and then suddenly they came across Hungry Nids. So here we are. We've got the Grey Knights fighting against Tyranids. And we've got some burrowing... Burrowing action going on by the Ravener Alpha. Gonna go straight down here. Interesting to choose the requisition point of the VP. I mean, fair enough. You're a Nid. Nids are always hungry for requisition, that's for sure. I like this player from Anta. Rushing the contested power node. I always like that play, actually. Especially against Nids, because you know that you're likely to find Hormagunts out here, and the Demon Hunter should be able to wreck them pretty hard because of his special attacks in melee. So Ante leading with the double IST initially, and then getting his Strike Squad later, which is also a little bit eccentric. Leaving his power farm a little bit vulnerable, though. He's going to get decapped by the Ravener Alpha, probably. Strike Squad are in melee with him already, but unfortunately they don't get a special. Well, that's sad. Don't think the Ravener's getting out of this one, though, but he's probably fine. You know, he's got the decap, he'll be happy with that. Termagants want to get out of there, though. They're just going to bleed. They're going to bleed to Storm Bolters and Force Albans. Honestly, not sure what Leonis is doing taking this engagement. Yeah, it's not really an engagement you want. You're not going to win this. Is he going to lose his Ravener for it? No, Ravener's too speedy. That Ravener Alpha, man, such a speedy boy. Speed 6 by default. So... Strike Squad kind of going insane at the moment. A little bit of a rift tear there, trying to slow down the kiting termagants, but it's kind of backfiring to be honest. Only slowing down the Strike Squad, which are now going to have to engage the Hormagunts. This is an awkward engagement. If the Strike Squad get lucky with specials, they'll do good, but man, they're not getting lucky at all. I've not even seen a single special. What the hell's that all about? Wow. Doesn't matter. Strike Squad just wipe out the Hormagunts, even with the double termagants contributing in. And that goes to show you the power of the Strike Squad in this matchup, man. They're so good. Cheeky little banishment to soften them up, and then a shitload of kills. Not a lot of XP, though, on the Strike Squad, I guess. Yeah, it's got distributed fairly evenly. Demon Hunters have claimed a lot of their XP. IST getting their Sergeant incoming now. Lose a couple of models there to the Ravener Alpha. And the Warriors are going to be on the field. So we might see the Hunter's Blade to try and deal with these. Just get a bit of power melee DPS coming out in the early game. Warriors can be a bit of a pain because you have a lack of power melee as the the Odo Malleus, believe it or not. Certainly in tier 1. You know, lore-wise, of course, Grey Knights should be doing power melee. As probably should the Demon Hunter, but in terms of gameplay, that would be a little bit too strong. So they get all that power melee in tier 2 when they get their Justicars and Purifiers, but the problem is... means... They're not very good at killing these Warrior Brood models in Tier 1. Warrior Brood, very tanky squad. Tanky throughout the whole game, really. They get that beautiful upgrade in Tier 2 with the Adrenal Glands, which gives them a massive spike to their HP. Helps them scale and remain tanky even when the enemy does start fielding power melee weapons or even plasma weaponry. Modern Malleus do get access to that. You know, they can get plasma guns on their Inquisitorial Stormtroopers. When they get the Justicar and the Strike Squad, they're going to have power melee swords. So, they've got a few options to bust these Tyranid Warriors, but for now, they're relying on their Strike Squad in melee. And as you can see, they're not bad. That was obviously a very injured Warrior Brood squad. Two models down on that squad. Not a lot of action happening elsewhere on the map, but you can see that the map control is quite dominant for Leonis right now. The problem that Antair is having is the lack of power over here forced him to actually build a generator on this side and now he really needs to defend it. That said, there's only two Termagants here and both of these Termagants, they don't even have the Toxin Sack upgrade, so they're not going to be able to do anything against the Strike Squad. I mean, you can see there, even with all 16 of them shooting at the Strike Squad, they just don't do any damage. They need their Toxin Sacks. It's a huge damage upgrade. I think it's like 30% damage extra and 10% more HP or something like that. 
so yeah, without the, the Toxin Sacks, they're just not very relevant. They're okay at hitting Stormtroopers, because yeah, they're squishy light infantry, but... Strike Squad? Nope. However, Leonis was prioritizing getting his Ravana Brood out. I don't know why he didn't use his tunnel there. That was a bit of a mistake, wasn't it? <laughs> Perhaps he's not a regular Ravana Alpha player, I don't know. Oh, there was a tunnel here. That's probably why. Okay. Well, how the map control switches, eh? Map control heavily in favor of Antair right now. Nice little rift here there from the Demon Hunter. Gonna delay this push. This is a dodgy retreat for the IC. What's he doing? I don't know what just happened. Why did he... I don't know what happened. Was he moving his units on the right-hand side? This is a crazy push from the Strike Squad. Yeah, look, Strike Squad are good, but I don't know about charging a Strike Squad and a Demon Hunter into double turn against Holmogos rather than a Warrior Brood. You know, that's maybe a little bit too much for them. Crusaders hitting the field now. Okay. Well, again... Powerful melee units, but they're light infantry, so they're going to be vulnerable to the Raveners and the Termagants and even the Ravener Alpha and their Pew Pew. However, these guys are quite unique in the when they die, they get the loyal to the end effect that the Lord Commissar Global can give. Meaning, every time a model dies in the squad, all the other models get extra damage and extra HP, and that stacks. So they can they can become quite scary actually. You kill one or two models and all of a sudden they're doing more damage and you're like, whoa, where did all this damage come from? I thought I'm killing models, there should be damage bleed, but not always. And now with with two melee squads here, the Crusaders and the Strike Squad, this this should be a winnable engagement. Warriors engaging quite early here, they're low on HP, so there should be if you can get a kill, yep, there you go. A little bit of synaptic backlash and another one. Ooh, this is a brutal engagement for the Tyranids. Homogons isolated now, no one's supporting them with firepower. Massive amount of damage coming out here. One of the units should have been going after the Termagants, yeah there you go, Crusaders are on it. Crusaders not losing a single model there, actually putting in huge amounts of work, all that damage that they output, very useful there. The mistake that Leonis made was engaging with his warriors. And it's quite funny actually, because in the prior engagement I noticed that he didn't do that, he pulled his warriors away down the hill. But they actually had a load of HP there, and they were just up against Strike Squad, so he could have engaged with them there. Whereas here, they were at like two thirds of their HP, having to fight Crusaders and Strike Squad. No thanks, they don't want that fight. So Ravener Alpha's just been sneaking around the side the whole time, which is fair enough, I suppose. See the death buff effects coming in there, taking their max HP up decrease slowly as they lose their rings of buffs. Curious actually how much these cost to reinforce. Let's have a look. 35-4. Okay, so they are actually pretty damn expensive to reinforce to be honest. That's like... Wow, that's like an A... That's more than an ASM model in terms of power. Is it? I can't even remember. It's, it's similar to an ASM model. Oh yeah, losing two of them, so that's eight power. There's no way an ASM model costs eight power. Big loss. But I hadn't even noticed, Antair is already in tier two and has a Dreadnought on the field, so... Yeah, that should be a nice little tool to help them make a bit of a comeback. Currently got its Heavy Flamer equipped. Its Force Glaive. We'll have to see, is he going to push straight onto the farm? Let's have a look. Quite typical that you will see that with the Grey Knight Dreadnought, of course, with that heavy flamer. You purchase it relatively quickly. You've obviously then got a nice timing window to go get a very quick gem bash. And it looks like that is what he's going to do. And then you typically wait for a response from the enemy, see what kind of AV they're going to get. Are they going to go melee? Are they going to go ranged? And then you choose your upgrade for your Great Night Dreadnought. Let's 
So here we go with the Gen Bash. Crusaders can probably start capping the power. Oh my god, is he actually going to try and hard cap it? That is mad. I don't like this Ranta. I don't like this at all. He should just Gen Bash this. Gen Bash it while he can. Seeing a lot of infantry superiority and melee superiority tools coming out of the Tyranids here. We've got the melee upgrade for the Ravana Brood. So they lose their Devourers. They get extra HP, extra melee skill. The ability to burrow, which we just seen then. We see the full upgrades now on the Ravener Alpha, rocking the Acid Splatter, which is a splash damage power melee weapon. He's got the Reinforced Chitin. So watch how good he does now against the Strike Squad. So he's immune to knockback now because of this Reinforced Chitin. Gives him 200 extra HP. Still losing the fight, like. Oh man, that was sloppy. The thing is, when the when you have the reinforced kiting and the enemy hits you in melee, it debuffs their speed, and because you're also immune to knockback, it lets you get out quite easily without taking any real losses. Did I not turn myself off? I guess I didn't. Well, you'll you'll see yourself now. Oh well. So you're not meant to ever let that happen, basically, because you know you debuff the enemy and then you have the. Um, the immunity is not back, so it's not like they can get a lucky special attack and then wipe you. But I guess he just doesn't have the, the HP to stand up to the strike squad still. The splash damage as well won't contribute too much against the strike squad with only four models, better against units with more models. Here come the Crusaders. Charging into the Termagants, probably not the best idea here. They need to be charging into the Venom Brood. The Grey Knight Dreadnought at this point is getting very, very low. But look at the Grey the Venom Brood now. Look how slow they're moving. That is due to the Psychic Fortress here. And looks like we've got a Force Rod upgrade as well for the Demon Hunter. Retribution ability. So that causes knockback and silences. And does a little bit of damage to the enemies. Silencing, if you're not aware of what that means, it means that they can't use abilities for a short while. It's also a decent melee weapon. Decent. But honestly, I feel like the Dreadnought has not really done a whole lot here, and it should have got this whole bash off. That was a huge, greedy misplay by Antair earlier, trying to capture the, the gen farm. Really greedy. I don't know why he thought he'd be able to get away with that. That was a perfect opportunity to clear out all of the power from the Tyranids. And they'd basically be stuck in tier 2 for a long time because they're actually going really heavy in tier 2 upgrades. All this shit here on the Ravana costs a ton. We've got the Synapse, we've got the Adrenal Glands, we've got the Enhanced Muscle Coil. We're talking a lot of upgrades here, guys. I think... Oh, I don't know if the plus is Endless Swarm or if it just gets that from Crippling Poison and Toxic Sacks. They probably do. So... Antair's going tier 3. Now you see, that's it. If he got tier 3, got out Grey Knight Terminators and, the, and Leonis is stuck in tier 2, then that's GG. What can a tier 2 nid even do against that? Even Gene Stealers. They can't take on Grey Knight Terminators. No chance. Not with Demon Hunter support. But there is a there's a risk now that Leonis will be able to get tier 3, be able to pull out a Neurofrop or a Carnifex. That could be quite problematic. So there goes the Force Rod Silence. I'm not sure honestly how effective that's going to be. That was a bit of a strange engagement again. Just running Crusaders in solo is not really how they're designed to be used. They're meant to be more of a, like a devastating flanking force. I don't know why he didn't just wait for his Grey Knight Dreadnought. If he took this engagement with the IST, the Dreadnought, the Demon Hunter and the Crusaders, he'd have been, he'd have been cushy. But as it sounds right now, this Dreadnought's screwed because there's double Venom Brood on the field. Now on the plus side for Antair, Oh my god, nearly losing the IST as well, getting super close to losing them. One more leap. Oh wow, getting away on 10 HP. Did they have an Acolyte? I feel like they had an Acolyte, didn't they? Well, they don't anymore. They're dead. So what I was going to say is, this is obviously super heavy commit- Oh! Oh, the 
Death Spitters. That's actually cool, isn't it? So, you he goes double Venom Cannon, Venom Brood, takes out the Dreadnought. He already has ranged synapse on one Venom Brood. He doesn't need ranged synapse on the second one, so he waits to kill the Venom Brood. Uh, he waits to kill the vehicle, and then he swaps it to Death Spitters, so now this Venom Brood is still quite useful. <clears throat> gives them Inferno DPS, anti-infantry guns, and it gives them a HP boost too. So they'll be quite handy still for shooting down the enemies. Now the problem is that Antair is now tier 3 and the Tyranids are stuck in tier 2. We now see the Priest with his Eviscerator leading the Crusaders here. Tier 3 squad leader that is very powerful. And... Wow, look at the Death Spitters, man, melting these Stormtroopers. It's nice to see. We're gonna run back into the tunnel. Oh, we got the Tempest armor as well. Jeez. Okay. So, Ante pulling out the big guns. Is Leonis just spamming Death Spitters? I don't know about this, man. I honestly really think you need to get tier 3. You need a count effects because Crusaders and Grey Knight Terminators are gonna be a problem. No matter how many Death Spitters you get, these guys get into melee, activate that Psychic Fortress Global, which causes the AoE slow. Oh, it's gonna be a nightmare. Force Rod disrupting you as well. Mm -hmm. Let's see how this goes though. This is a lot of range DPS. These guys are still only light infantry. They've not even lost a model yet though, so they haven't got any of their buffs. Oh, the Tempest though, the Tempest! Oh, this is brutal with the Tempest. And the damage from these guys is gonna get really high. Tempest. Wow. Disrupted the Demon Hunter though with the Ravener Brood and the Ravener Alpha coming in the Demon Hunter needs to get out of there A lot of splash damage coming into the Tyranid army though. They're all so weak. How was How did a Warrior Brood model not die sooner? Holy shit Attempts the wipe on the Warrior Brood they get away with 14 HP. Can you believe it? One more swing from one of these Force Alberts would have been enough to take out that Warrior, but unfortunately that is a lost engagement for Anta. He loses his Demon Hunter as well, which is huge. A lot of investment in this Demon Hunter. So it's going to be a Vodima Razorback, but there is, of course, some AV on the field. One Venom Brood with Venom Cannons. The Ravener Alpha could swap to the Corrosive Devourer, which is a ranged anti-vehicle weapon probably doesn't want to, given that they've already invested in the Acid Splatter, but you could do. You could do the same thing you do with the Death Spitters, right? Swap to the AV, kill them, swap back to the Acid Splatter. We'll see. Generally, it is very hard to kill a vehicle like a transport or a tank with one source of AV, especially when you don't have a snare, and Tyranids don't have a snare. So... As long as you have something out of any of your three melee squads tying up that one Venom Brood, then the Vodima Razorback is basically untouchable. Now they could try and run it down with the Warrior Broods, we'll have to see. But I think I think the engagement is definitely winnable for the Auto Malleus here. Force Rod goes in. Ravener Alpha trying their best here, doing decent damage to the Strike Squad actually, with his little Ravener Bros. Tempest comes out. Crusaders force off the Venom Brood instantly. That was the Venom, wasn't it? Not the Death Spitters? Yeah, it was, yeah. So that's it, and that's the route. With the Crusaders then in the back line. Ravener's getting wrecked over here as well. Oh, and I think this Ravener Alpha's gonna die now too. Demon Hunter's not a slouch of that Force Rod, he does damage. Yeah, really, really bad engagement for the Onis. So the honest is at this point spamming Death Spitters. I guess this is a bit of limit testing for him. Look, the Death Spitters are fine, and it's I like the play he did initially with the double Venom Brood, take out the Dreadnought, swap to Death Spitters. That's cool, but getting three of them is a little bit ridiculous because once your ranged backline is compromised, your ranged backline is compromised, right? You know, Gene Stealers would be better in this instance to try and deter these Crusaders from going mad. Which is evidently what they're doing. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Because you've got to remember when 
melee units get into melee, they get resistance to range damage. And oh my god, this is insane. They're just bleeding everything. And then they, they lose models, they get more HP and damage, and now that's dead warriors. Ah, uh, yeah, this is slaughter. Crusader slaughter, level 4 crusaders now. Vordemar Razorback comes along, puts a little bit of pew pew in. Contributes something. And I think Leonis has lost this. You know, if he just got tier 3, got a Carnifex out, then this would be less concerning. I mean, the Vodimer Razorback would still prove problematic. Because you could tie the Carnifex up in melee, and then just shoot it with the Vodimer Razorback, but... To be honest, there was a big window where there wasn't even... a Vodimer Razorback out, and a Carnifex could have been really helpful. Even ignoring the Vodimer Razorback, as I said earlier, the Granite Terminators would be a problem too. What can you do? So, yeah, double death spitters now and one venom brood. Disrupted by the force rod, probably into a banishment. Oh my god. Psychic fortress and a tempest. Yeah, this is brutal. This Tyranid Blob's screwed. So is, is that the actual Venom Brood that's still in play? Yeah. But the Strike Squad just ties it up. Yeah. An attempt at using Catalyst there to finish off the Vardamer Razorback, but it's not going to happen when the Strike Squad can just tie it up. This is over. This is done. As long as Antair keeps a melee squad near to the Vardamer Razorback to tie up the Venom Brood whenever they present, then it's immortal. Yeah, and then you just send the Crusaders down this side to hold the Contested VP because they're such a powerful unit. It's going to require basically all of Leonis' army just to get rid of them. In which case, you know, he isn't taking either of these two VPs. Here we go again, Tempest coming down on the Termagants over this side. Antea really loves this war gear. I don't know about rushing tier 3 to get that Wagger though, it doesn't feel super useful. Because at the end of the day it doesn't count a counter effects, right? I'm sure it's great in an end game. End game army versus army kind of scenario, but compositionally it doesn't count a counter effects, and that's what Leonis needed ages ago instead of this blob. I mean, look at this blob. What is it gonna do? You're blobbing against a demon on her. He can control you with his Rift Tear by default, now with the Tempest as well. He can control you. Might even get some friendly fire from the Toronto Formation here. Okay, you just managed to dodge it. He can control you with the Force Rod ability. He can control you by throwing melee units at you and using Psychic Fortress. I just. Yeah, this strategy was a little bit flawed. Uh, but I assume Leona's just trying to do a little bit of limit testing, really, on. The limits of the death spitters and look they're, they're legit they're fine they're good they do their role it's nice to have a non-piercing ranged weapon in tier 2 especially on a unit that itself is heavy infantry right so if you're encountering any of them space marines with bolters he'll they'll perform extremely well won't do quite as good against plasma guns or inferno bolters but they'll still do fine but in this case, when you're dealing with the bottom of Razorback, unfortunately, it's not going to be good enough. But nice to see things like Crusaders in action, putting in a lot of work there. Rare to see the, the Tempest ability. And the bottom of Razorback doing well, and God forbid the poor Tyran has met these Grey Knight Terminators. So there you go, the Grey Knights will move onwards, purge this planet of a few Tyranids, now they're going to go and slay some demons, as you do. Onwards and upwards to the Grey Knights. Hope you did enjoy that one, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you want a little bit more, check out the Patreon. It's all on there, exclusive casts upload. I upload an extra cast there once every two weeks. I try to make it always high level 1v1 content. Sometimes POV. Not very often, but hopefully going forward there'll be a bit more POV. 
Anyway, that's all from you boy STD today. Torpid out.